today I am super excited to show you the brand new 2K indoor camera from Ufi. And when you hear the price of this thing, you won't believe it. Let's check it out. Welcome back friends. If this is your first time here, my name is Eric. If you're in the home automation, smart homes, and especially home kit, you're definitely in the right place. Today's video is a part of my home kit series, but unfortunately the Ufi indoor camera is still in beta when it comes to home kit, but more on that in a moment. I'll be leaving a link down below to my full pros and cons list on my website. So if you want to get more information or get an update as I continue using this product, definitely check out that link down below. Ufi offers two versions of their 2K indoor camera. There's this one, which I'm just calling the freestanding one, and it retails for a drum roll, please, of $40. That's right, only $40. And then they also have a pan and tilt version for just an additional $10 for 50 bucks. Uh, you really can't beat that. I'm gonna be reviewing the pan and tilt in the near future, so make sure you subscribe to this channel. But without further ado, let's see what you get for your 40 bucks. So like I mentioned, this is a 2K camera, so it should have a little bit better resolution than a 1080p camera. It also features on-device AI for human and pet detection, which is really nice that it's running locally and not up in the cloud. It also has the ability to record 24 seven, which is a huge plus in my opinion. You will need to provide your own SD card. And it also has the ability to work with voice assistants like Lady A, and also Siri HomeKit, which I'll talk more about later. It also comes with a USB-A to micro USB wire. Fortunately, it's not USB-C, even though it is 2020 and it should be. This thing's only 40 bucks, so I'm kind of giving it a pass here. They also include a power brick or power adapter and some mounting hardware so you can mount this to a ceiling or to a wall. On the front of the device, of course, you have the camera lens. Above that is a microphone. Below it is the status light. On the right-hand side is the SD card slot. On the back is a speaker, sync button, and the power input. Go ahead, download the app, which is available in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, and follow the instructions to make an account. To add the device, select what device that you have. This is the indoor camera, and just follow the on-screen instructions. It's super, super easy. It will have you scan the QR code on the bottom of the device, and about two or three seconds later, it will have you press the sync button on the back, and that's it. You're done syncing this up. Next, you want to select what Wi-Fi you currently have. You will have to have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. If you have 5 gigahertz, unfortunately, this will not work for you. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Please wait. Setup was successful. Next, you have to select what type of video storage you like. I'm going to personally go for the local backup where you have to insert your own SD card up to 128 gigabytes right onto the camera, and it's going to record 24-7 to that SD card. And the app it will identify different detections depending on what settings you have on I'll go more into that in just a moment but that should speed up for you finding what you're looking for when you are recording 24 7 second option is cloud-based and there's not a lot of information on this currently I'm trying to get more I will be updating a full pros and cons list when I get more information it does work on the app so even if you do not have an SD card it will store clips in the cloud and it does give you 30 free days. I'm not quite sure what the price is afterwards. I'm trying to get a full confirmation of what that price is. There is a rumor that it's going to be $3 or $30 a year for one camera or $10 or $100 a year for unlimited cameras. Now this is unlike their other Ufi cameras where it has a home base. This does not have a home base and it's not going to back up to the home base, but you do have an option of a NAS drive. You will have to use RSTP. I will be doing my own NAS drive in the in their future so if you guys are interested in that hit the subscribe button and you'll see that video which i'm super excited for that way i'm not storing the footage right on the camera because if a thief comes in sees the camera they're going to take the camera with them but if with a nash drive if you have it hidden in your house somewhere that footage is automatically backed up and you can turn in that footage to the police and hopefully catch the thief once the firmware is updated it'll take you to the main page and you can see all your cameras right here down at the bottom you click on events and see all the events but we're 
we're going to go into the camera settings and see what other features there are. You can turn the camera on and off. You can turn the status light on and off. And you can also turn off the auto night vision. So if you store this in a window like I'm going to do and point it outside, you don't want that night vision on because you're just going to get reflection. In the video quality tab, you can adjust the quality of the streaming and also recording. If you have the bandwidth, you might as well put it up as high as you can. But if you do have connection issues or bandwidth issues, you definitely want to lower that down. But personally, I'm going to keep it at 2K or as high as I can for streaming. Next one down is detection settings, and this is what it's going to record. Of course, it's going to record 24-7 if you have an SD card, but otherwise, it's going to follow your detection settings. If you want to, you can specify activity zones. That way, you can specify that it will only record when something is moving in that zone. Fortunately, they do limit to two zones. You can also specify what you want to detect and the sensitivity. So you can do people and pets or all motion all together. It can also detect sound of any sound or something like a crying baby and you can adjust the sensitivity of that detection also. The next feature is super duper cool and they call it pet command. All it is is a motion detection in a activity area. If it detects motion, it will actually just trigger a pre-recorded message. So you can do it for your kids if they go into the cookie jar or tell them to get out of the cookie jar or maybe even a pet that jumps onto the couch. Well, at least the alert worked, but yelling at them didn't work at all. Next section down is notification settings, so you can specify what you want to get notified of and how efficient you want it to be. I didn't really notice any difference between the first one and the second one, so I kept the full effect on. You can do the third one if you must have a thumbnail, but I did see a little bit of delay with that, but the other two, it came through right away. In the record settings, you can specify if you're going to record 100% of the time 24-7 or follow some type of schedule. In the storage setting, you can change to some cloud storage or to a NAS drive. And in the auto settings, you can turn on off the microphone and the speakerphone and adjust the volume. All right, this is a test at 100%. 100%. This is only a test. Back to the main screen. If you start getting too many notifications, you can actually snooze it for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, whatever you need. Down at the bottom, you can also see all your events all listed out right there, which is really nice to see all your events in one place. Next tab over is the security mode tab where you can set the cameras individually to home mode or away mode. That way, when you're home, you don't get notifications, and when you're away, way you can definitely set that alarm off and i gotta tell you it is super loud all right guys this is the sound test and video test of the oofy 2k indoor camera now I'm about 10 feet away for the oofy cam now I'm about 15 feet away for the oofy cam all right this is the infrared or night vision of the oofy 2k which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight infrared lights at about five feet. It's the UV night vision at 10 feet and the UV about 15 feet. Now when it comes to HomeKit, like I mentioned earlier, currently it is in beta. They're actually shipping this out without HomeKit, even though they did announce that would come with HomeKit and people are upset and I can understand that. I did get into the beta program, so I'm able to test it out for you. If you're into HomeKit and you're buying this because you want HomeKit, I would say hold up, wait until it's fully certified with Apple and then buy it because we've been through this once or twice before and we've been burnt but i will be updating my full pros and cons list with an update when this does get fully certified so definitely check out that link down below for an update once the update firmware for home kits is super easy to install all you need to do is go to home kit and add it like another accessory press the plus button add accessory and scan the QR code on the bottom of the device. Because this is in beta, it did tell me it is an uncertified accessory, but I went ahead and added it anyway so I can test it for you guys.
If you're new to HomeKit Secure Video, it is really cool to specify what happens when you're home and when you're away. You can have everything off when you're home or you can detect activity. Because this camera is also a motion sensor within HomeKit, you can activate automations, which I'll show you more in a minute. But I know a lot of people don't want recordings when they are home, so you can turn that off right here. And then you can set the away setting to stream and record when you are not home automatically. And like I mentioned, it does treat the camera as a motion sensor also. That way you can trigger automations within your home. So I tested out here as I'm walking into the house, I have an automation that says if it detects motion, it will turn on this vocal link light. I also enable this camera with Lady A and Google. And if you have one of those units with a screen, like a Show 5, you can definitely pull up your footage. But unfortunately in my testing with my Echo Show 5, once I set everything up and got the syncing, Unfortunately, it just wouldn't pull up the footage. It would say that it was going to, but just never did. So hopefully they will fix that in the near future. But other than that, I gotta tell you, this thing is awesome. Honestly, I can't believe all these features are jam-packed into this $40 camera. This thing has features not even seen in cameras that cost three times as much. So job well done, Oofy. Love, love, love this thing two thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. I truly appreciate it. And if you want to see the next video in my HomeKit series, check that video right up there. And I will see you on the next video. I'm out.